Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, hello, welcome. My name is Cameron and it's been a minute since I've posted a video to YouTube. Like, three months been a while. <laughs> Fun. Um, actually, my New Year's resolution was to post more on YouTube and it's currently, like, March 16th? 15th? And the only video I've posted of 2018 was a school video. <laughs> no, and I posted a Japan montage of pictures. So, you know, two videos in a span of three months. Such a great YouTuber, guys. Just so amazing. <laughs> that being said, I want to start filming more and I have like three video ideas planned that all are related to exchange. Because if you're new here, I went on exchange to Japan this past summer and lived in Tokyo for six weeks. So I was going to talk about my experience because I've had people contact me because of my YouTube channel asking me questions like, oh, I'm going to apply because I saw your videos, they looked fun, How can you help me with this? So I'm like, you know what, I help those people. And so that means there's more people out there who have questions and I'm going to answer some of them. At least the ones that they ask me because I figure those are the most common ones. So this is a common questions I get about exchange videos. Yay! First common question I get about exchange is like what do I think set my application apart from others or like what is most important? And for me, like I think that's like your essays and your interview that you have because okay, my experience is going to be based on YFU only because that's the only exchange company I've been through, but essays in general are part of an application and I think the main reason why like your essay sets you so much apart is it really shows who you are and like how you are as a person, how you act as a person. So it's really important to actually like, gauge who you are because like in your other, like in just like the normal application, it's kind of like, how old are you? What are your hobbies? How many family members do you have? Like, what's your favorite subject in school? Like your essay really gives you the chance to like show yourself and like who you are as a person, what you do as a person. This brightness is really bad. Oh my goodness gracious, has it been like this the whole time? I'm gonna cry if it has. There we go, that's a bit better. <laughs> it probably was like that the whole time. Oh god, my intro is gonna be, I'm gonna look like a ghost. Okay. But definitely like the essays and then like the interview in general, because like during the interview, they pretty much ask you the same questions you answered in your application, but when they actually see you talking about it, you can actually like you see if you're passionate about it. Do you actually like it? And so really the essays and the um, like interview are what I think is most important when you're focusing on your application. That being said though, you do have to like meet the minimum criteria if they have like a GPA requirement of like 2.5. You do have to have a GPA of 2.5 to be like looked at in your applic application to be looked at. But don't think just because your GPA is like exactly a 2.5 that oh like there's less of a chance of me getting in because my GPA is so low. Like no. Like, in my opinion, no. At least I don't think so. Like, I've had met people on my exchange who were met, like, bare minimum GPA requirements and got accepted. And then I've met people who had, like, way above the GPA requirement and got accepted. So it really just comes down, in my opinion, to your essays and your um, interview. Number two. I don't know how to word this question. Question number two, cell phones, question mark. Good enough for me. So for me, I have AT&T as my data carrier for my cell phone plan thing. And they have an international phone plan where you pay $10 a day and you have like unlimited data, which for me was what was easier since we originally were doing, it was like you paid $30 a month and you had like two gigabytes of data and like things like that, but it really wasn't working out because a lot of the things in Japan like says it's free Wi-Fi, but it's like unreliable free Wi-Fi for me, at least the places that I found in Tokyo area. And so it was really hard for me to like talk to my friends because like all my Japanese friends were like, oh, what's your line? And I was like, I can't use line because I don't have data and there's no Wi-Fi. So for me, like that was my best option, but I also had friends who got like um, like a personal Wi-Fi, like it's kind of like MiFi or something like that, where you carry it around like your own Wi-Fi spotter. 
which I think if you want to pay that, then by all means, like, I think that's another good option. Or, like, there's people who got, like, SIM cards, like, Japanese SIM cards to put in their phone. And then I also know people who just bought, like, a really cheap phone in Japan. So, really just, like, talk to your parents and see what will work best. Because for me, my parents felt more comfortable just having my own, like, plan there. And the $10 a day one really helped by all means. It was, like, a bit more expensive than probably other plans you could have got. But it worked best for me, and it was what I preferred to use. Third question, question number three, numero three. Why do I say it so many different times? Guys, I'm such an awkward person, if you haven't realized that yet. I love life. So question number three is, what do you have to pay for? So for me, my scholarship covered everything from flights, orientation, and like that whole cost. But uh, so all I had to pay for was what I got, was like what I did in Japan. So uh, let's see, like I probably spent about 30,000 yen maybe, so about like $300. And so, yeah. I would bring about like, I'd probably be like $500 or like 50,000 yen if you're going to Japan or about like $500 in general because you don't know like what, okay, this is for like my six week program. This isn't for a whole year because for me, and like you can bring less, but like my school did, it wasn't in school the whole time I was there. So a lot of times I was just walking around on my own. And I was like, oh, like this looks good. This food looks good. I'm going to try it because we don't have it in America. So I'd spend money on that. Or like train fees, like I'll buy it, they're cheap. But when you use like a train, like every single day, like it does add up to an extent. And just like, you kind of want to buy a lot of things that like you can't get here in America. Like I think I brought back probably like 15 pounds worth of food back home. <laughs> Cause you know, weird Kit Kat flavors <laughs> was something everyone wanted to try here from my friends. But like, you're gonna want to buy like cool souvenirs you can't get in America and cool things like that. So I, for me, I would probably bring about like $500 in whatever currency your exchange country uses. That's probably worded very weird. I apologize if that did not make sense. But yeah, I expect that much. And then other than that, and like obviously for like spending wise, that's what I would bring. But if you're yeah, yeah, just bring $500 of whatever currency your country, host country, uses. And you should be good for at least a six-week stay. And, like, your parents can always transfer you money. Or, like, I just use my debit card, so I would go to an ATM, and I'd be like, okay, I need some more money. Huh, okay, got some more money. That was so weird. My top three questions I probably get about my exchange are, or about exchange in general, not even just my exchange, Exchange in general is one, what do you think is the most important part of your application? Two, cellular data plans. And three, money. So, though, like, obviously, that's my opinion. Like, you don't have to just take my opinion. Watch other videos. That's what I did. I found like 15 different YouTubers who were going on exchange, whether it was to Japan or not, that I just binge watched their videos. And I was like, this is what they're doing. And it worked out for them. So I'm just like, watch other YouTubers. If you're this is your first video you're seeing of me, you can go watch my videos too. Like, I had a fun time in Japan. So yeah, bye.